Hey y'all and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm showing you five of our favorite Thanksgiving side dish recipes. These are things we always make for things like Thanksgiving and Christmas, but some like the baked mac and cheese we make all year round. And I wasn't able to get to the cornbread dressing, so maybe I'll have to include that in one of my Christmas recipe videos. I hope you all have a very happy Thanksgiving. Now let's go ahead and get started. This first recipe is a southern baked macaroni and cheese. To begin, in a large pot, I'm boiling up one pound of elbow pasta. And I cooked it according to the directions on the back of the box. Don't overcook it though, because this will continue to cook as it bakes in the oven. When it's done, remove it from the heat, drain it, and pour half of those noodles into the bottom of a 9 by 13 inch baking dish. Spread them out into an even layer, and on top of those noodles, I lay down about three tablespoons of butter. Now season this to taste with a little salt and pepper. And here comes the star of the show, the cheese. And I do use a lot, about two pounds actually, but hey, this is macaroni and cheese. I just layered on half at this point, but you'll need a total of eight cups. Now I'm adding on the other half of those noodles. I didn't have quite as much for this layer here. I think I put down a little more than half on that first layer. And I'm repeating that whole process for the second time. Noodles, three tablespoons of butter, a little salt and pepper, and the remaining four cups of shredded cheddar cheese. And I like to use a mixture of medium cheddar and sharp cheddar. But you could really use any kind of cheese you like. Spread that out, then set it to the side. Now, I'm from the South, here in South Carolina. We add egg into our macaroni and cheese. Let me know if you do the same. So into a measuring cup, I added one beaten egg, along with one can of evaporated milk. You'll need two to three cans total, but for now, we're only using one. Give that a really good whisk. Now I'm taking that milk and egg mixture and I'm gonna evenly drizzle it over the top of that casserole. Now for this next step, remember when I said you'll need a total of two to three cans of evaporated milk? It really depends on the baking dish that you use. Right here, I'm pouring over my second can of evaporated milk and I can already see the milk about halfway up the baking dish there. My dad bakes his in those big aluminum pans so he uses three cans of evaporated milk. Now this bakes uncovered at 375 for 35 to 45 minutes, or until that top is nice and golden brown. This is one of my family's absolute favorite recipes. We have it at every holiday, every get together, and this is my dad's recipe, and he's been making this since as long as I can remember. Do y'all have a recipe like that? Like something that you don't have a special dinner without? This is also the kids' absolute favorite. This is really simple to make, it's not complicated, and it would be perfect for your Thanksgiving dinner. We've tried a few other people's macaroni and cheese casseroles, like at other different get-togethers, but this is our absolute favorite. It is delicious. This next one is an easy homemade cranberry sauce. And once you try this, you will not want the canned stuff again. In a medium sized pot, I added a 12 ounce bag of cranberries, along with one cup of sugar, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and one cup of orange juice. I also added in about a tablespoon of orange zest. Give all that a really good stir I brought that mixture to a bowl, then turned the heat down a little, and let this simmer for 20 to 30 minutes. The cranberries will start to pop, so I like to cover this with a lid, but I like to put it on where it's tilted a little, where the steam can still get out, and you'll just want to simmer this until it thickens. And it doesn't take long at all. I usually let mine simmer for about 30 minutes. 
and you can really see how much this thickens up. And if you wanted, you could even go in with an immersion blender and blend it up a little bit. When I serve it, I like to top it with a little more orange zest. And once I learned how to make this homemade, I said goodbye to the canned stuff. This cranberry sauce is simple to make and it is so good. Now this is cracked out broccoli casserole and although I dislike the name of it, it's my new favorite side dish. To a large bowl, I added in one can of cream of chicken soup, along with one cup of sour cream. I also added in two tablespoons of ranch dressing mix. And if you want, you can cook up some bacon. You'll need about a half a cup of cooked chopped bacon. But to make it easier, I just add in this little packet of real bacon pieces. And I also added in half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. You'll want to stir this mixture up really well. Then I added in one pound of fresh broccoli florets that I chopped into smaller pieces. Then stir that until that broccoli is completely coated in that mixture. I'm using a 9 by 13 inch baking dish for this. I did spray it with nonstick spray. I poured in that broccoli mixture, kind of spread it out in the dish there. Then I'm going to set it to the side and make up a quick topping. I've got a small bowl here, which I could have used a medium one. I'm using one sleeve of Ritz crackers. I used my rolling pin to crush them up. Then add those into that bowl, along with one stick of melted butter. That's a half a cup of butter. Then stir that around until those crackers are coated in that butter. Now you're going to take that cracker mixture and sprinkle it evenly over the top of that casserole. Then I'm going to top it off with about one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Now this bakes at 350 for 25 minutes. Here it is out of the oven. And you really can't go wrong with anything that has cheese, bacon, and ranch in it. Am I right? We don't care for them in this, but if you wanted, instead of the Ritz cracker topping, you could add French fried onions. My family loves this recipe. It is absolutely delicious. Now around here, no dinner is complete without dinner rolls. And these only take a little over an hour to make. In my measuring cup here, I have one and one fourth cup of warm milk. I also added in one and a half teaspoons of salt, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, and four tablespoons of melted butter. Stir that up. Now I'm adding in one tablespoon of the rapid rise yeast. Then I stirred it one last time and I did let it sit for a few minutes just to make sure that yeast was still active. And after about five or 10 minutes, this is what it should look like. That mixture should start to foam up on top. Then I poured it into the bowl of my stand mixer along with three and a half cups of all purpose flour. And I only added half of that flour to begin with. I'm using my dough hook attachment for this. I turn the mixer on and let it go ahead and start mixing before I added in the other half of that flour. Everything was starting to combine, so I went ahead and added in the rest of that flour. You'll want to let this mix until the dough pulls away from the sides of the bowl. And after you've added all your flour, if that dough is still too sticky, you can always add more flour I would say about a tablespoon at a time. You don't want your dough to be too dry. Mine was still a little sticky here, but it didn't stick to my fingers too bad when I touched it. I covered it and let it rest for about 10 minutes. Now it's time to make these into rolls. I use a kitchen scale just to make sure all the rolls are exactly the same. I got the total weight of the dough, then I divided that by 15 because this recipe makes 15 rolls. I've got my ball of dough here and I'm ready to make it into a roll. It's kind of hard to explain, but I stretch the dough out and kind of tuck it under towards the bottom 
and I go all the way around like that. That way the top is nice and smooth. And here I'm doing it upside down so you can see it a little better. Maybe it'll make a little more sense. Then I flipped it over and placed it in the baking dish. Once I've got all of them rolled up, I don't want them to dry out. So I have a bowl of water here. So I'm using my fingertips to rub a little bit of water on the top of the rolls. Now cover these and place them somewhere warm for 30 minutes or until they double in size. And after they've doubled in size, they go into a preheated 375 degree oven for 16 to 18 minutes. And here they are out of the oven. And I already have melted butter ready to brush on the tops. I love this recipe because these rolls come together a lot quicker than the ones that take three hours. These are so light and fluffy and buttery on the top. And let me tell you, these do not even last one day in my house. And this recipe does make 15 rolls, but I always triple it when we have get togethers with the family. You can't have a holiday dinner without rolls. And these are absolutely delicious. This last recipe is one of the kids' favorites. It's cream corn. In a large saucepan, I added four tablespoons of butter and let that begin to melt. Then I steamed two of the 12 ounce bags of steamable corn according to the directions on the back. Then I added those in. I stirred that up a little. By the way, I have the heat set to medium here. I added one teaspoon of salt, about an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, one cup of heavy cream, now I've got half a cup of whole milk here. To that, I'm adding one tablespoon of cornstarch. Stir that until it's well combined and you don't see any clumps of cornstarch. Then I added it into the corn. Now let this simmer until it thickens. And that only takes about five minutes. This recipe comes together fast. And if you like Parmesan cheese, you can add in about a fourth of a cup of that. It is really good in this, but the kids like it better without. So I just leave that out. Everyone loves this cream corn. It is so good. And you can see it thickens up quite a bit. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like this one. I do wanna say I am very thankful for each and every one of you. I hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving and if you're not already, subscribe down below and I will see you in the next one.